What's good people, it's Dan with the Corporate Thief Beats. We're back with another tutorial video. In this tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how to make kind of a Bryson Tiller kind of Tori Nanez or a Drake type sound. It's kind of like similar to the Trap Soul beat that I did before. Uh, this one is called Never Look Back. There's really good open pads in this sound, uh, in this song. So it's a really nice wide open song, but it kind of has that R&B mixture with a, a trap sound. Um, this, these are the kind of beats I love to make. They're kind of wide open, so they're kind of very versatile. A singer can use them, and a, and a hip hop artist can use them. And there's a lot of space for them to shine, but still kind of have some kind of um, sound that's not too kind of minimalist like a modern trap beats are. So I'm going to stick to the same format before. I'm going to go through some sounds, and then going to go through the intro, reverse, and kind of the hook. And then at the very end, I'll play the whole beat together. And um, this is called Never Look Back, and it's available at the Corporate Thief Beats if you are a hip hop artist. Um, just check in the links in the description. Uh, it should be like for resources like my beat course and um, my uh, how to make a beat side course and the drums that I use in most of my beats. So we'll just jump into the verse or the intro and see what it sounds like. Have a quick listen. And you can see it starts off with this vocal sample. So all, all I did was find this vocal sample in one of the uh, some quarter pack I found online or purchased online and just kind of opened it up and see what I could do with it. And you can see there's an auto filter on there as well. Now the auto filter will just kind of slide the pan uh, around the around the from side to side and just kind of create a little bit of an effect and kind of widen the whole song as well it's a very simple little vocal sample and then i kind of built some chords over it so we kind of listen to the chords that are over it So chord, um, when you're making these kind of R&B sounds, these kind of R modern trap R&B sounds, pads are really helpful because they're not like a piano which can kind of take up the mid section where the vocals go a, a lot of the time. They're more like um, kind of just a, a small kind of atmosphere in the background. They're not really taking up too much space, but they do uh, create that kind of vibe where it kind of fills the, the voice or the... the Kind of fills the kind of um, the instrumental without being too quiet so like if you just leave the drums and stuff everything kind of sounds a bit too quiet and there is kind of no definition to it that's why i like putting in a pad sound in the background it just kind of fills the silence in the background of the beat and i've put in another more complicated pad sound here this is the ambient pad and it kind of plays a little bit of a melody in the background as well <laughs> simple little chord structure with a simple little melody on the background so I just played that note in the keys and then I just transferred it to a pad sound that I really liked and both of these two sounds together sound very modern R&B <laughs> see where we're going with that. I'll just mute that vocal for a second because it's a bit distracting at the moment. And we'll just listen to the ambient strings and the harp. They're also playing the same chord progression as 
and the melody as the uh, scatter pad that I have there. We'll just listen to them. You can see they're kind of this kind of weird kind of uh, s string sound. There's nothing really to it, it's just the sound with a little bit of delay in there and it kind of cuts some at the EQ, just getting rid of a bit of the lows. So you have a nice plucky sound coming through and it kind of accentuates the pad sound as well. So it's they're all kind of building and layering on top of each other, creating their own individual sounds then by layering them all together. That's a beautiful little part. It kind of sounds very Lady Gaga. I didn't change, I played this straight out and I didn't really change it. I kind of liked the kind of delay kind of action to it. I, I kind of quantized everything and I didn't really like it. I felt it kind of just kind of everything kind of hit on the note too perfectly. I kind of wanted it to kind of just flow like, like you can kind of hear my flaws that I'm a bit late in the melody. But I kind of like it and I, just, I had, I quantized everything and came back to it and said, no, what Joe, it had a better air when it was just a little bit kind of delayed. It just kind of felt a little bit more relaxed and it felt like the drums and the bass line will pull everything together anyway. And we'll just kind of listen to Scatter Pad and that together. And you can hear the lovely atmosphere in it now. It doesn't sound kind of uh, boring or flat, it kind of has that nice wide open feel. And you can hear, you can see in the next section in the verses, uh, when the drums come in, we'll just play that, uh, there is sections where these sounds come in and out and kind of just kind of adds to the mood and change up the verse so a verse doesn't sound kind of boring it doesn't sound the same kind of four bits over and over again it has different sounds coming in and out so might the strings might come in and then the harp might come in scatter pad continues to play and i do have a little kind of a cut there where the kind of drums will just fade out and then you'll just hear a screen in the background i'll show you what i mean in a second and there is a little bit of a power lead. I'll just play that little bit of a power lead first to see what we're looking at. And this is a common thing that I do in my songs. I kind of tend to make a lot of what I call them pre-courses. Uh, so they kind of have that kind of, just a little sound different just before the chorus hits. It kind of builds a little bit of tension in the song and it kind of defines the verse and then the kind of, that's, it kind of highlights to the artist as well. We're kind of coming into the core, the hook now. So it's kind of just my kind of project, uh, pro, pro, <laughs> my production kind of technique that I just kind of tend to do in a lot of my beats. I like that kind of very rigid kind of first chorus, pre-chorus, outro chorus. I like that kind of messing with that kind of structure kind of stuff. And a lot of the early kind of producers that I used to listen to like Timbo and uh, Danja kind of did that a lot with their kind of pop records that they made. Uh, Max Martin is similar, it does a lot, and Ilya does it as well. Uh, and I like that kind of structure. So this little pad here, this power lead, just kind of highlights that we're kind of coming into a little section and it kind of just adds a little flavor. Um, it's a bit of a counter melody to everything else as well. sounds pretty nice and tight and we'll just play the verse on its own with the drums for a second and we'll just kind of go 
through all the sounds. So the kick, pretty basic. Nothing, nothing too complicated there. And snare. So it's a nice open snare with a bit of reverb on there. Then I have another snare coming in. It has more of a metallic sound. It's kind of a kind of almost like a nail hitting. But it's a nice thing to cut through the mix as well. That that sound will cut through the mix pretty well. That metallic sound. Very basic little half sound. I'll go into all the MIDI in a second. And then we have that kind of perk, which is kind of like a scream. It's just a vocal scream. And it just kind of kind of brings in the track when you start it off, when you're starting off the song. And it just kind of kind of starts everything off and it kind of has a little bit of an effect. I kind of like that sound. So we'll just kind of go in and take a look at all the MIDI. Pretty, pretty basic drums, nothing too complicated, and it's the same drum pattern throughout the whole song, except in sections where I just drop it out. So like, I'll just play this and I do the drops for a reason, you'll see why I do it now. <laughs> sample float away in the background everything else stops but it kind of just jumps into the next part of the uh, the verse and it's kind of just a little production trick technique that I tend to do a lot it's just kind of makes a different makes it a little bit different and kind of keeps the listener interested it keeps the rapper kind of guessing and stuff like that I kind of like those kind of tricks and it gives me the opportunity to use a lot of the same stuff and be more efficient with my production <laughs> There's a lovely bass sound coming into the hook now. I'll show you this in a second. So this is the kind of little tricks that I do again. This is what I call the uh, chorus one, and then it'll be a chorus outro, and I'll show you in a second. So this is chorus one. singer is pretty tight in there with uh, with the key they could sing in there or maybe the rapper what I usually kind of use this little section as is um it kind of just the singer or the rapper will uh, sing the hook here and then they will just let that melody play at the end kind of just kind of a, like chorus out throw and it's just kind of my little production tricks again and it's just kind of changing up from the uh, the the structure of it, playing something different for a change, instead of just hitting the the chorus and the uh, of the like a normal uh, eight bar loop or a four bar loop, uh, whichever. And um, we'll just take a listen to those uh, synths. They are all playing the same uh, melody. Uh, melody and guess what our bass line plays that as well and it's just a deep sub bass and but I really like this little trick here as well where I just play the end of the little kind of lick in the bass line and it just kind of leads into the, the hook we'll just kind of show what show you what I mean it kind of 
of steps into the hook, which is kind of pretty cool. I really like that. Um, so we'll just kind of listen to the uh, chorus outro bit. There isn't really much change ups in it. I don't really change it up. I kind of leave it. You can see that I take in and take out some stuff from time to time. And here, here I kind of left in more, and here I take it out a bit more. And they're just kind of small little different kind of techniques, but the rest of the beat is pretty the same. Uh, so this beat was called Never Look Back. Uh, you can find it on the Corporate Thief Beats. Should be links in the description. Got questions or I've left something out. Um, Make sure to give me a shout and I will do my best. And I think that's everything in the beat, guys. That's all that there was in, in it. And there's nothing really complicated about it, but it has a really nice R&B vibe and I really like that. It's kind of like modern R&B kind of vibe. So this is Dan with the Corporate Thief Beats, guys, and I'll just play you out a bit of the track at the end.